All right, welcome to AP Environmental Science. Uh, we This is the first screencast for this class, Chapter 1, and then we'll also do Chapter 2 as well. So I've got little fun little pictures here. i uh, probably seen them a few times before. Let me change over so I can get the little laser pointer guy going. All right, so first chapter in here is uh, Environmental Problems, Their Causes, and Sustainability. So these first couple of chapters are a little more general, but we will hit on some main terms. Of course, as we're always going through these chapters, will be some main focus things we'll look at. Uh, something that's pretty glaring, and I've been doing this class for about 10 years now, and you know, the way we would always talk about you know, environmental science is something to be concerned about, and there's potential problems out there. There's things that I think we're seeing, and there's trends, there's correlations that we think are connected. Um, but this is just some data from the last seven years. So as you can kind of see on here, it's like, well, what are the hottest years that we have on record? And the seven hottest years on record just so happen to be the last seven years. And then again, you can include the top 10. It's probably 10 of the hottest in the last 12 years, I think it is. Uh, but you can see this is not a coincidence. This is something that we're absolutely seeing as being a problem. And I think 2021 is on pace to be, again, the hottest year on record. Close to it anyways. So you can kind of see a little trend in there. And you can kind of see also that we're averaging about one degree Celsius, which is ballpark right around two degrees Fahrenheit. And this is kind of a problem. Um, and this, that's one of the, the, the main focuses for a lot of the potential problems that we're having, whether it's uh, as far as climate change, temperature, energy in the system. And we see this play out in a variety of different ways, whether it's the hurricanes that are coming through typically in late summer and in the fall, whether it's the wildfires that we're seeing all over the world, um, differences in desertification and uh, lack of farmland that we once had, loss or extended use of water supplies, it goes on and on. Um, so these are some of the potential problems that we're looking to try to figure out how we can correct or change course. Okay, uh, these are just some of the questions I'm necessarily going to go through and answer them all, but they should be answered as we're going through. So you can kind of go through those and read those. I won't spend a whole lot of time talking about them right now. We have a few more listed over here. Uh, principles of sustainability, just to get on the idea, like what is sustainability? Uh, I think I have a slide coming up in a little bit, but it's the idea of using resources, whatever they are, in such a way that you get what you need, but you don't overextend that, that future generations won't also have them. And that's a, that is a problem, it's not a potential problem. It is a problem uh, based on our living choices that we have now. This slide here, I have a couple here um, on this topic here, which is really interesting. Looking at our population and how it's changed over time. So as far as humans being an animal or whenever you want to consider humans becoming, uh, typically a lot of scientists or anthropologists will go back something ballpark like, and they pick a number. They Sometimes they say like 11,000 years ago. Uh, in regards to like agriculture, sometimes it's 100,000 years, sometimes it's 200,000 years. It depends when you want to start calling humans, humans. Either way, uh, population didn't change a whole lot until, until agriculture really started to kick in and still, relatively speaking, not much change. Agriculture kicks in right around 10,000 years or so ago, so just somewhere around this area. And you can see population doesn't change really at all. It's not until we figured out farming on a large scale, producing artificial nitrogen and the Industrial Revolution. So this kind of takes place somewhere ballpark like 1750, Industrial Revolution. And you can see it's not even like a gradual change. It's exponential growth. This is definition, exponential growth. And in my lifetime, I've seen the population total double from something less than 4 billion people up to right now, um, maybe by the time this class ends the year, uh, we'll be up to about 8 billion people. 
So we haven't crossed it yet. It's like 7.9 almost, and probably about 8 billion before this school year ends, if not uh, shortly after. So you can kind of see this little picture here. It's like, I don't know, maybe we'll be somewhere close to 8. Well, no, we'll pass 8. <laughs> um, and where the top is, we just don't know. But we do know that it is starting to slow. But the problem with exponential is the more people you have, even with a slow rate, it, it still goes up quite quickly. Looking at some of the changes, again, historically, you can kind of see on here, um, looking at these various ages that we kind of point to and say, yeah, that was probably in that period. And you can look at the huge time differences we have here in the thousands of years. Uh, a lot of times we don't typically think that far back. But if you look at like the Egyptian um, civilizations and everything in through there, um, we do have records of some of these things. But really, population doesn't change until, like I said, about 1750 or so. And then it's just off the charts. Phenomenal. All right. So the idea of living more sustainably, which I mentioned a little bit earlier, and I'll give you the definition here in a second. Again, uh, we have these things that interconnect. And we're just thinking about, like, in regards to nature. On the left-hand side. Everything in nature, all these things kind of interact and life goes on. Uh, the water, the air, the soil, the rocks, all these things are interchanging and you can support a certain amount of life within there. Now, if you kind of bring humans into the conversation, on the right hand side, you have these different worldviews and ethics and how that plays into population size and economics. And again, these aren't just one to the other. They're all over the place. All these things interact together. And with all of that, then you go have the interaction going back and forth with the actual world supply of resources. And they interact. And we're looking at, okay, well, how can we do this in a sustainable way? Okay. So environmental science, the class that we are in, uh, a lot of times people think it's just kind of like ecology, sort of like ecology. Yes and no. It does incorporate ecology. And I have a slide come up here in a second that will get into a little more detail. So part of it is is understanding how nature works, these different cycles. That kind of goes into ecology. Just to mention what ecology is again, that is how organisms um, interact with each other and things in their community, other um communities within their community um, populations, but then also how they interact with the non-living things, the biotic versus the abiotic, how these different layers will interact with each other. Now, this is where it gets um, kind of interesting. It's again, we have, when we think about humans, bring us into the conversation, how the environment affects us. And so, for example, right now, we're starting to see the environment affect us in negative ways. So for example, as I'm recording this, we just had a hurricane come through yesterday or two days ago, and that's nature affecting us. So kind of going back and forth. That word I put in uh, parentheses, the anthropogenic, that's like a little vocab word. And that is how um, some of these environmental effects are caused or how we are causing some of these environmental effects, us changing the environment. And just that last little point there, how can we live more sustainable, sustainably, sustainably, I'll get it out. All right. So this is a really good slide I threw in here. Uh, it goes into the idea of how environmental science is different from ecology. So notice at the very top, ecology is part of environmental science. So it's an umbrella. Uh, but what makes it kind of cool and interesting, environmental studies is an idea, but I kind of use the umbrella science in there. Um, so you have all of the sciences, the what maybe sometimes what they call them is like the hard sciences or the physical biological sciences. Um, all the ones you can kind of see on there, the chemistry, the bio, uh, you've done all these classes. And of course, they're all fantastic. Uh, but we're incorporating all of those into environmental science. Now, what also makes this class interesting is it does have that studies component to it because it's broader than just the sciences because the reason we do some of the things that we do is because of those items on the left hand side some of those social sciences so 
having law and ethics in politics and economic conditions. A lot of times when decisions are made, it's usually an environmental choice versus an economic choice. And these are the kind of conversations that we debate back and forth. Okay, this is a pretty good place to stop. I try to keep these videos to about 10 minutes. Most people can sit through a 10 minute video and I'll call this the end of lecture one.